Good morning all. This is Lidl's weekly newsletter thing from some time ago now actually and I was interested in this stuff. It's the Lidl smart home, here it is, smart home stuff and this time round they've reintroduced quite a lot of the old stuff. They also brought in this uh, fan heater but that's not Zigbee that's just Wi-Fi and I can't quite see why you would need to remote control a fan heater. But anyway, the thing I was interested in was this smart plug. I've already got the smart extension lead that's in the shed and turns on, well, actually, ironically, my shed heaters. But I was interested in this single unit smart plug. Of course, on Sunday, the 21st of February, the one item they didn't have was this. And I kept going in day after day after day and they didn't have it. And then a note appeared saying, the stock of this thing's been delayed, it will be arriving in due course. Anyway, to cut a long story short, it finally did arrive, I think a week or two weeks after this date. And here it is, Smart Home Silvercrest Smart Plug. Of course it's UK style three pins, UK and Ireland, uh, Cyprus and Malta I do believe. Still got its sticker on it, so let's cut that. Take a look at it. And also, um, ultimately, take it apart, if we can get it apart. Now, just before I try this out, um, there is a fuse on the bottom. It says fused, not to be confused with broken. It just means it's got a fuse. So that's a 13 amp fuse. And I'm going to take it out because I'm just wondering if there's a screw underneath there. Uh, no, there isn't. Hmm, that's interesting. So how does this thing come apart? Do I just jam something in here and lever it until it comes apart? Interesting. Right, let's switch on some mains. And I'm also going to switch on 5 volt USB uh, because this cable is routed round to the hub which is over there somewhere. Now this is the little app on my phone. Will the Zigbee Gateway Study, because that's the one I've just powered up, will it appear on here? I don't know. Oh yes I think it just has. So let's have a look at that. Um, now I'll add a device. Add. Oh yes, the LED is flashing. Searching for Zigbee devices nearby. So the Zigbee hub is just over there. It's wirelessly looking for this. And it should, in due course, find it. And I should be able to pair it up. Well, that had to be done a second time. Maybe I'm swamping the RF with my phone being here. But anyway, it says one devices have been successfully added. A socket. Done. Socket. So what can we... Oh, done. So what can we do with socket? Let's press it and find out. I would imagine, turn it on and turn it off. Oh yes, there's just a giant size power button. But with also uh, power, schedule, countdown and setting. So let's turn it on. And there it goes. It's on. I heard the relay click. Let's turn it off. Oh, a springy type of sound. Now, I'm just wondering um, what sort of relay is in here because one of the things I would quite like to do with this is put it on my Wi-Fi access point, which is fairly inaccessible but seems to crash quite a lot. And I'd quite like to power cycle it. But that means that this thing is going to live pretty much indefinitely with the relay pulled in. Is that a good thing to do? And then only occasionally will it be let to drop out and then pulled in again when I want to reboot my Wi-Fi access point. So let's take it apart, see what it looks like inside. So pull that out of there and um, yeah I don't really want to damage this but yeah I'll start poking things in here and see if, see if I can lever the front off. Okay I've had a go at this <laughs> and it doesn't seem to want to come out. I thought of using these plectrums as levers, but I think that's going to be too soft. So it's screwdriver time. But even that doesn't want to budge. 
and I'm making a mess of it. I have bought two of these, so it's not the end of the world if I destroy one, but that's not very nice, is it? Well, it's yielding, but it's making quite a lot of cracking and popping noises. I think it might be glued, possibly. Yeah, it does feel like glue is breaking as I go around it. It's not going to be pretty, is it? Maybe the plectrum could be used here to... I just don't think it's got the strength out that's starting to hurt. And I'm in. So this thing has four uh, retaining clips around the outside and four not particularly heavily barbed. I think they're just triangular um, clips so that this just clips in tight. This piece does seem to come off like so which hides the shutter mechanism although that's quite well clipped in so that's not going to fall out so that's good now there's this and I've got two screws up in the top corners so let's undo them so I'm undoing the screws now is the board or the module becoming loosened in such a way that I can withdraw it can't feel anything yet so I think these points this one down here and that one this one will go to the uh, neutral pin underneath which is that one and this one goes through the relay and then down to the live pin so this is the switched live and that must go through to the uh, live pin on the incoming so I think these two have been soldered after the board has been lowered down so the only way I'm going to get the board out is to unsolder these and they're sort of quite deep inside this thing but I'll have a go you want to watch me struggle with this oh yes now this iron is so hot it really only seems to clean properly if I put it in the um, what's this stuff called Brillo pad type stuff I need some solder now this is probably lead free in here but I don't know where my lead free is I'll use regular let's press on with this thing so I think the only way I'm going to get this out is if I unsolder these two pads and for that I'm going to need a chisel tip bit nice and hot that's probably lead free solder so and then I'll pull on the earth pins to try and lift this off what I think are two uh, pieces of metal attached to this stuff here let's give it a try let's give this an initial attempt but it's a hot iron I don't want to burn my fingers there's very little light on this so I'm not sure what you'll see possibly very little ah that seems to be melting now can I lift it a little bit? No, it doesn't seem to be budging. Okay. Ah, my mistake is that that earth metal work is attached to the earth pin and not the PCB. It travels straight through the PCB. I don't think the earth actually lands on the PCB, so I'm not pulling the circuit board. I'm going to have to pull on live and neutral. Okay, pulling doesn't work. Solder sucking next. Right, that was extraordinarily difficult don't unsolder that one because that's attached to one of these fuse arms do unsolder that one but of course it's nigh on impossible and when you've done that this pulls out but you can see that soldering that pin into that gap is the last thing you do when assembling this and you can see a hole through there so it's out <laughs> so but that was a battle that took about over an hour to get this out now let's take a look at it so life comes in on that pin there through the fuse now the other part of the fuse metalwork is here so that runs into this point so fused mains comes in here uh, goes through the relay and to the mains outlet 
but it also goes through this FR1. Now, is that a resettable fuse? Uh, it's a fuse, certainly runs around here, through the board at that point, and goes into the bridge rectifier. So there is a power supply circuit here. After the bridge rectifier, we have a 400 volt capacitor. This one, where does it say 400 volt? There it is, 400 volts through an inductor, another 400 volt capacitor, 4.7 microfarads, runs around here. Uh, we've got an in inductor and a low voltage capacitor there. Oh, is, is that low voltage? Let me just check that. I can't get an angle on it. Yeah, 10 volts. Uh, there is a controller chip down here. Interestingly, there's some heat transmissive gunk here. I don't quite know why. Maybe it was just a bit of a heat sink for when you're soldering this pad here, which has to be done after this module is put into here. <laughs> which is the irritating bit. So I don't quite know why they've put a big pile of gunk there, but yeah, maybe just to absorb the heat while soldering. Uh, what else we got? So once we get the power supply down to a low voltage, I presume we need five volts and 3.3 or maybe just 3.3. Um, here's the Zigbee module, the radio module, and also has the microcontroller on it. So I think that's doing all the intelligent decoding of the radio signal and the switching of the relay. Now, is this relay a lot smaller than the relays that were in the um, the big extension lead strip? I'll see if I can find a clip from that video and just insert it here. So the relays are these AFE ones. Um, they're five volt relays, so the coil is five volts, but the contacts are rated 16 amps at 250 volts AC. But yeah, this one certainly does look a lot smaller. And yet this thing is rated for the full three kilowatts, I believe. Now there's another daughter board here and all it seems to have on it is an LED, which is the flashing white light uh, for you to press that button or to tell you that it's uh, doing a, a Zigbee pairing. Uh, a switch, but there's also a regulator on here. It's a 6209 regulator. So I'm not entirely sure why that's there does say plus 3.3 here so maybe 5 comes in and 3.3 comes out on this board maybe they chose this board because there's quite a large copper area on there so it kind of works as a heat sink it's also at the top of the uh, plug yeah maybe that's what they did so some detail on this relay if I can get my pen in there uh, 5 volt DC coil now it says 18 amps 277 volts AC 20 amps, uh, 250 volts AC, I think that is. And there are some other ratings over here. Oh, is that 195? No, 20 amp, 125 volts AC. But here, 20 amps, 250 volts AC. Oh, with different ratings, possibly. Yeah. Right, let's put this thing back together. And uh, a bit of advice, never take one of these things apart. It just isn't worth it. It's an absolute horror show. So that fits in there and I need it to sit flat such that I can get these two screws in in these corners, which I can't illuminate. But yeah, the board has to sit flat on those pillars and then also sit flat down on some uh, plastic studs underneath here. So it's flat. That now means that this pin is poking through the board in such a way that I can solder it. I'm going to solder it and it ain't never coming out again. Talk about right to repair. I mean, we have a right to repair this stuff, but when it's made this difficult, then it's, um, we might have a right, but it's not easy. Right, I'm going to go up to 420 for this bit of soldering. I'll keep the camera running. Uh, there could be some swearing. Right, that tip is about in the right place. Let's get in there, get lots of solder on it. Come on. Flow it round. Even at 420, it's barely hot enough, really. I need some more solder on there. I'll have to put it on the tip. 
and lay it in because I just the sort of won't run in there. Okay, I think that's a pretty good solder joint. Want to have a close up look at it? There it is. Just to the right of this brass pin is my solder joint and I'm happy that that's good. Quite a bit of flux lying around. That was me trying to get the thing undone in the first place. So now let's uh, reassemble the plastic and see if it works. Okay, that drops in there. And then this clips on the top. And that's it. Yes, it's all a bit gouged where I was trying to get this thing out in the first place. But that's it. Let's see if it works. Okay, we've got some real life mains on here. Press the button and my neon plug thing comes on. So that works. Uh, now let's check the Zigbee wireless e bit. So here we are. There's the socket. There's the on off switch. Let's press it. Oh, it comes on. It goes off. And this course is not on Wi Fi, this is on 4G. So this is talking via. Uh, 4G to, I don't know, the two-year system, I assume it is. And sending that command, which is coming in through my router and through the uh, Zigbee gateway and into the unit. So that works. So that's it. That's how that thing works. Uh, cheerio.